Okay, um, this lecture is way too long, and so what I think I'm going to do is I'll skip some of the slides that are in your handout because I couldn't decide what wasn't important. So, which is I'm, I'm going to go through it, and I thought you might um, be interested in the ACR guidelines, which were released today. The guidelines for um, screening, this is what they're called, screening, case definition, and management of lupus nephritis in adults. Just, boy, just rolls off your tongue. They are released online today, so I'm allowed to talk about them. So this is the core working group which I led, and this is, uh, ACR guidelines you might be interested to know are pretty complex thing and you actually, if you want to do them, you have to, they, they put out a call, they uh, offer a grant and uh, for $100,000 you can compete for this $100,000 and they will support a system if their reviewers like the system you have to make guidelines. And these take a, a long time to do because they're complicated and you can tell they're going to take a long time when you look at the number of authors here and each one has his or her opinion. These are uh, rheumatologists, nephrologists, and pathologists, renal pathologists in here. And this is the task force panel. This is the most important group. And th what they did was the core working group reviews the literature and gives a review to the task force and also writes scenarios on this is what's happening in a patient, what would you do? And the task force votes, and the outcome of the vote depends on what the, um, the task force says in response to these scenarios. So um, it takes a while to do this, and I've, you see a lot of people here who uh, represent experts in lupus nephritis from the nephrology world and the rheumatology world. Of the 39 people we had working on these forces, um, we had uh, uh, only 16 with conflicts of interest, and these were the major ones. I mean, every company in the world was listed here by somebody. But these were the ones that appear most often. This is called the RAND UCLA method. It's now passe, but when we put the grant in about uh, two years ago, it was the raging cutting edge thing. So we do a systematic literature review and then the committee provides the, the votes, provides the extra opinion. And the publication will be in ACNR. It's up online today. It will be in the June uh, printed issue. And after the paper was written, the guidelines, it had to be approved by three committees at the ACR. Guidelines Subcommittee, Quality of Care Committee, and the Board of Directors. That's about 65 critics. And so you can imagine the rewriting um, that went on. Now, you'll see recommendations presented as levels of quality, evidence derived from multiple randomized controlled trials or a meta-analysis, B evidence that's based on a single high-quality randomized controlled trial, or a non-randomized study that's very large and considered good quality. And C, the recommendation is based mainly on the consensus of the voting panel. So it's mostly expert opinion and case series. But do remember that expert opinions are based on experience and literature and not just on what somebody felt like this morning. Here are the recommendations regarding renal biopsy. Every patient with clinical evidence of active lupus nephritis previously untreated should undergo renal biopsy unless strong, strongly contraindicated. And in fact, the voting committee absolutely refused to give recommendations on any case where they didn't know what a recent renal biopsy showed. So that's the state of the art. I hope this helps you with getting your third party payer uh, to okay a renal biopsy. Biopsy results should be classified by the current ISN RPS classification, and I have it on a slide here, which will go by quickly. You have it on the handout, and it is in the uh, paper on this, so you don't have to go look it up. You can get it right in the paper. The recommended therapeutic strategies are based on knowing the classification of nephritis on the renal biopsy. Here are other recommendations for when to do a renal biopsy in other patients. If the serum creatinine is increasing without a compelling alternative cause, if there's confirmed proteinuria of greater than a gram per 24 hours, and we don't care if you use the 24 hour, if you like the spot protein creatinine ratio, either one's acceptable. And combinations of the following, assuming the findings are confirmed at at least two tests, proteinuria greater than 0 0.5, that's not very much per 24 hours, plus hematuria, which is defined as equal or greater than 